In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Well, today is the feast of St. Leo the Great, one of the uh, more famous popes in the illustrious history of the popes, uh, I believe in the fifth century. Many of the prayers that we use on a regular basis in the Roman Missal, uh, he wrote. Now, he didn't write the collect for today's Mass because uh, he was not dead yet, but he wrote many of the, of the opening prayers that we still use at Mass. He also had a great devotion to Our Lady and the council that declared Mary the mother of God used a lot of Leo's theological uh, expertise on the Blessed Virgin Mary in order to get to that conclusion that Mary is indeed the mother of God. So a very important member of our body of Christ. So let's keep in mind as we confess our sins that we too are called to be great people of faith and filled with the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who never allow the gates of hell to prevail against your church, firmly founded on the apostolic rock, Grant her, we pray, that through the intercession of Pope St. Leo, she may stand firm in your truth and know the protection of lasting peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. If it pleases the Lord Almighty, he who studies the law of the Most High will be filled with the spirit of understanding. He will pour forth his words of wisdom and in prayer give thanks to the Lord who will direct his knowledge and his counsel as he meditates upon his mysteries. He will show the wisdom of what he has learned and glory in the law of the Lord's covenant. Many will praise his understanding. His fame can never be effaced. Unfading will be his memory. Through all generations, his name will live. Peoples will speak of his wisdom and in assembly sing his praises. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. The response is, the mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. The mouth the Lord of the just, just murmurs wisdom. wisdom. Trust in the Lord and do good, that you may dwell in the land and be fed in security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will grant you your heart's requests. The mouth, the mouth of, of the, the just, just murmurs wisdom. wisdom. Commit to the Lord your way. Trust in him, and he will act. He will make justice dawn for you like the light, bright as the noonday, shall be your vindication. The mouth, the mouth of the just, the just murmurs, murmurs wisdom. wisdom. The mouth of the just man tells of wisdom, and his tongue utters what is right. The law of his God is in his heart, and his steps do not falter. The mouth, the mouth of the, the just, just murmurs, murmurs wisdom. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, 
Uh, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, today's readings are uh, chosen because of the saint, uh, Leo, who we're celebrating today. And in the, the Gospel, we hear the call of Peter uh, to be the rock on which the church is founded. And out of that notion of the rock on which the church is founded comes the reality of all of those who have been successors of St. Peter building on that same rock. And as we look at the succession of, of popes, we see that there have been some good ones and some bad ones. Just as in any pile of rocks, you'll find some good ones and some bad ones. But the underlying reality of what's going on here is what Jesus says to Peter. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. And then that is the source of the hope that we have, that our church will prevail over everything. That regardless of whether the rocks on the pile happen to be good ones or bad ones, the Holy Spirit will put them together in a way that makes the church prosper, that gives the church the truth, that allows the church to evangelize the reality of Christ risen from the dead with the gift of salvation for all. And then we have today's reading from the book of Sirach. Um, it pleases the Lord Almighty. He who studies the law of the Most High will be filled with the spirit of understanding. And one of the realities of St. Leo was his tremendous sense of wanting to know. He was interested in getting this church, which was still fairly young, it's the, the 400s, he's interested in getting this church to have a foundation that's in writing, that's available for others to see, experience, read, absorb, take into themselves, so that they can have the same gifts of the Spirit that he has by the sacred anointing of being the Bishop of Rome. He wanted you to have that ability to know the faith, not just because somebody tells you about it, but because you experience it yourself in that tremendous body of, of writings that are available to us. It's why we have here in the church, in the spirit of, of St. Leo, we have a library. It's there so that we can experience personally the wisdom of the church. We have Bible study, and we do that so that we can experience in the community of faith through the gift of the Holy Spirit with all of those gathered together, the magnificence of what this church has to offer and how it can share it with others. We have all of the ministries of the church so that, that those who exercise each one of those ministries can be about the business of sharing the gift of faith with all those whose lives they touch, whether it be simply giving out the body and blood of Jesus Christ, singing in the choir, saying hi to people when they come in the door, or proclaiming the word from this pulpit. All of those ministries and all the ones that I didn't mention exist because Leo wanted us to know the gift of faith 
so that we can share the gift of faith. So we have great uh, respect in our church for Leo. He's considered one of the great doctors of the church and one of the very first doctors of the church because he wanted us to know what he knew. Mindful of the many needs in the world around us, let's bring a few of those before our God this evening. And as always, let's first pray for the church, particularly as today is the festival day of one of the bishops of Rome. Let's pray for all the bishops of the church, that they might be guided by the Holy Spirit to be a font of wisdom, of uh, kindness and compassion, of the spirit of loosing on earth what they can so that we might strive not to be bound by those things that offend through our sinfulness. Let's pray for the bishops. We pray to the Lord. And let's pray too for all those who lead the world's nations, that they might open themselves to the movement of the Holy Spirit so they truly become servants of those whom they lead. We pray to the Lord. And let's pray that the uh, climate summit going on in Glasgow, or perhaps ending now in Glasgow, might actually do something to resolve the problems that we face with our climate. We pray to the Lord. Let's pray for all those who continue to suffer from the COVID virus, families who have lost loved ones, families who are suffering and enduring the, the, the pain and anguish of the disease in their own families, for all of those health care workers who continue to work with COVID patients, for all of them to be touched by the caring power of God, we pray to the Lord. And as this is a feast of one of the great doctors of the church, let's pray for our Catholic institutions that help all of us to grow in wisdom, faith, and knowledge. For them, we pray to the Lord. O loving and almighty God, we've shared with you some of our concerns some aloud, some in the depths of our hearts, and we pray that having heard them, you'll answer them. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this bread which we offer to you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us spiritual food. Lord, may the mingling of this water and wine make us partakers in your divinity as you humbled yourself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this wine which we offer to you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us a spiritual drink. Lord, be pleased with this sacrifice, which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my sins and cleanse me of all of my iniquities. Thank you. My sisters and brothers, pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Through the offerings made here, we pray, O Lord, graciously shed light on your church so that your flock may everywhere prosper, and that under your governance, the shepherds may become pleasing to your name. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, 
through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, we pray these gifts, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they might become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and St. Patrick, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's share with those around us a sign of God's peace. with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, to govern the church you have nourished by this holy meal, so that firmly directed, she may enjoy ever greater freedom and persevere in integrity of religion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, not that I'm into doing commercials, but. Uh, in honor of St. Leo, you might want to head down to Rieger's, check out the tremendous offerings of uh, books and materials they have there, and enrich your life so that you can evangelize the world far more better. That doesn't sound very grammatically right, but anyway, the Lord be with you. <laughs> May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our celebration has ended. Let's go now to live the Gospels with our lives.